WDAM, Laurel Hattiesburg. You're watching News 7 Weekend Night Beat. You've got seven on your side. Congressman Stephen Palazzo speaks out on Camp Shelby's budget cuts. That story tops our newscast. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Vanessa Pacheco. Government-ordered budget cuts are taking its toll on Camp Shelby south of Hattiesburg. Defense Department-ordered budget cuts have caused 290 full-time employees at Camp Shelby to take off Mondays beginning July 8th. In addition to furloughs, officials at Shelby say 17 state employees who were gate guards have either been laid off or assigned to other positions on base. No longer are there entrance guards at Camp Shelby, and vehicles are able to drive straight through without having to stop first. U.S. Representative Stephen Palazzo, who was in the area recently, had a very specific opinion on the budget cuts. Here's what he had to say. I'm not going to micromanage the National Guard and tell them uh, where, to, where to spend their money when it comes. I think they know best on what they need out here at the Post. But I also would say sequestration. It's, it's just the beginning of a lot of cuts, and it is going to affect our readiness. It is going to affect training and recruitment and retention over time. So I, I, I still i am holding out hope that we'll be able to go find responsible cuts but not try to balance the budget on the backs of our men and women in uniform. Shelby's Public Affairs Office says military pub police are still roaming the area to maintain security, but admits it's limited security. Well, Dave Ware's team of lawyers are expected to be done reviewing the ballot boxes soon. After days of examining contents of all 14 boxes, as well as absentee and affidavit ballots, Dave Ware and his team are expected to be done by Monday afternoon. Mayor Johnny Dupree has also decided to review the boxes, and we are told the pre staff will begin Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. State law allows 20 days after the election to contest the results. In this case, that would be June 24th, and so sources are telling Seven on Your Side that a court challenge is extremely likely. The woman killed in a fiery crash on I-20 in Warren County has been identified. The Mississippi Highway Patrol says 49-year-old Barbara Goff of Bellonia, Arkansas, died at the scene on Saturday afternoon. It happened at a mile marker 13 in Warren County between Bovina and Flowers. The Cadillac she was riding in with the, her husband, Craig Goff, hit a blue Ford. Troopers say the pileup started as traffic slowed in the westbound lane for an accident up ahead. At least four vehicles and the tractor trailer were involved. No charges have been filed and the crash remains under investigation. Department Marine Resources officials spent last night investigating boating accident in Biloxi's back bay that landed one man in the hospital. According to Lauren Thompson with DMR, the Marine Patrol was contacted just after 9 p.m. by Biloxi police with a report that a person had been hit by a boat while swimming. Authorities responded and found the victim with lacerations and fractures to both legs. He was taken to Biloxi Regional before being airlifted to USA Medical Center in Mobile. President Obama has named a State Department special envoy for closing down the military-run prison at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Clifford Sloan's appointed is expected to be formally announced on Monday. Sloan is a Washington lawyer with extensive government experience. He was recommended for the position by Secretary of State John Kerry. Sloan will work as the president's liaison with Congress in an effort to shut down the Gitmo Detention Center. Four people are dead and nine others injured after a multi-vehicle crash near Fort Worth. It appears it all started when one vehicle ran off the road late Saturday night. And while people who live near that road were helping, another vehicle hit that first one. Witnesses say two Good Samaritans, a mother and a daughter, are among the dead. One of the vehicles involved was a pickup truck with people in the cab and in the bed of the truck. Investigators believe one of the factors is inexperienced drivers and found evidence at the scene that alcohol may have played a role in the accident. In Ohio, a boy is shot during a Juneteenth celebration. The 11-year-old was shot in the thigh at a Columbus Park yesterday. Police say his injury is not life-threatening. Officers have a 15-year-old suspect in custody and say they have the weapon. No word on the motive. 
A sad story out of the Pacific Northwest, a 16-year-old cyclist participating in the Ride to Conquer Cancer died while riding from Vancouver, British Columbia to Seattle. Authorities say the boy was cycling with his mother and uncle at the time of the accident. The boy was trying to pass a large group of riders on a two-lane stretch of road when he fell. A motorist in an oncoming car was unable to avoid hitting the teen. And in lighter news today, people across the country honor the men in our lives for being a friend, role model, and of course a dad. Raycom News Network Carrie Grace takes us to the streets to see how Mississippi was celebrating Father's Day. You can celebrate dad any day, but it never hurts to have a day set aside for it. The Gulf Coast happened to be a popular Father's Day spot for many this year. We're actually on a short weekend vacation from New Orleans. I got both my kids out here. We went to the beach yesterday and uh, decided to come to Splash Pad today before we went home. Kids splashed, ate, and just soaked up the sun with dad. Some visitors say the Mississippi Sound has been their Father's Day spot for years. New for Father's Day, we've been, we used to come here every year for about five years in a row. Just Kicked around town all week long, had a fun time, loved Mississippi. The Carson family loaded up their RV and headed to the beach this year. They say this is their first time doing something like this, but they're enjoying it so far. Grilling, having a good time with the family and the kids, you can't beat it. Food, family, and fun is all that was on the agenda for most people today, but how could you not enjoy your day with those three things? Happy Father's Day! It was a packed house at Brewski's in Hattiesburg last night to help fight domestic abuse. The second annual Hub City Poker Run was held to help raise money for the Hattiesburg Domestic Abuse Family Shelter. The two-day event was organized by the Hattiesburg Association of Realtors. They say their main goal is to raise awareness about domestic abuse and to help those who are living through it. Right now they're helping over 200 women and children in the community. Um, they live there, they feed them, they help them with everything. And it's, it's a great thing to have in our community. So we really wanted to help them build a new facility where they can help more people. Last year's event raised more than $16,000 to go towards building the new facility. Still to come, U.S. intelligence officials reveal information on some of the successes of the NSA's gathering programs. That story next. The intelligence community is going on the offensive in the public relations war over the NSA's secret information gathering programs. Their latest salvo this weekend releasing tidbits of information about some of the program's successes. In the process, they gave up some previously unknown details about a high-profile terror arrest. NBC's Brian Moore has a story from Washington. When Colorado-based extremist Najibullah Zazi was arrested in 2009 with deadly backpack bombs intended for New York subways, federal authorities say he was taking orders from al-Qaeda. Now U.S. officials are revealing that terror plot was just one of dozens in more than 20 countries foiled with the help of the NSA's once-secret data-gathering programs. If we don't do that, a, a, a neck, another attack on a homeland is very likely. Former Vice President Dick Cheney says current technology could have crushed Al Qaeda. That program, that capability against uh, that target, we might well have been able to prevent 9-11. NSA supporters want to step up the search for Edward Snowden, the former government contractor who's claimed credit for the leaks. China is now investigating Snowden's claims that nation was a target for extensive NSA hacking. He needs to look an American jury in the eye and explain why he has disclosed sources and methods that are going to put American lives in danger. Well, the NSA gathered hundreds of millions of phone records, intelligence officials say only 300 were followed up on last year. We have to find the right balance between protecting our privacy, which is sacrosanct in the president's view, and protecting the country from the very real risks and threats that we face. Washington trying to calm critics who worry Uncle Sam is becoming Big Brother. Brian Moore, NBC News, Washington. The man accused of plotting to bomb the New York subway system pleaded guilty in 2010 and was sentenced to life in prison. Officials described the plot as the most serious terrorist threat on U.S. soil since 9-11, according to the statement released Saturday from the intelligence community. And here's Nick. Thank you very much, Vanessa. Coming up in weather, scattered storms will become the norm this week. We'll talk more about that right after this break.
Good evening and happy Father's Day to you. Nick Ortigo here. We start off with a recap of this warm Father's Day. Temperature getting up to 92 this afternoon, that morning low 72. But these temps are about what we've seen over the past few days and just slightly above average. The rain gauge empty at the Hattiesburg Airport. Doesn't mean we didn't see a shower though here in the Pine Belt we did, which we'll look at in more detail in a second. Alpha Insurance Sky Camera this evening is in Ellisville, Jones County Junior College, where they're reading 81 right now. They maxed out at 91 degrees. Current conditions at the Hattiesburg Airport, humidity still a factor in this weather. We've got 81 degrees for the temperature, 79% humidity makes it feel like 86 right now here in this 10 o'clock hour. More temps around the region, maybe one closer to your home. 77 in Collins, same thing in Bay Springs and Laurel, 80 in Waynesboro, 82 in Leakesville, and 78 over in Brooklyn right now. Southern Pine Electric Power Radar, as I told you, we did see a shower or storm pop up this afternoon. The majority of these were off to the west of I-59. We saw a little bit of rain, though, over in Stone County down towards the Mississippi Gulf Coast. But the heaviest rainfall seemed to come towards uh, the south side of the viewing area over in Pearl River County. And if there's any rain left, it seems to be out that direction around Bogalusa right now, just across the border. Another little storm to the uh, left side of your screen, uh, right under the 7 there. And that's over, uh, well, looks like west of I-55. And that storm has a little bit of lightning with it. Big picture, we're looking for the tropics to start heating up. Let this be a reminder that we are underway with this tropical season. This is an invest. It's not a uh, tropical depression or a tropical storm, but could possibly make tropical depression strength. It'll have two chances. It uh, looks like uh, just before it hits the Yucatan Peninsula or Honduras, and then over in the Bay of Campeche, it may actually uh, have a shot at becoming a tropical depression. Other than that, though, just a tropical wave, and the track on this system is not threatening to us here in the United States. Should just bring it right across the peninsula and then probably crash right into Mexico and quickly fall apart. So no major threat from that system, but a reminder that we need to be prepared this season. As we look to the future cast for precipitation, scattered showers and storms will be the name of the game this week. Just about every afternoon we're going to have a shot and a decent shot at seeing some type of activity in the way of afternoon showers or storms. This is 12:30 tomorrow. Our future cast picking up on some rain 2:30 tomorrow. Even into the evening hours we'll have a chance, but by later evening hours those rain chances should diminish. It doesn't mean widespread rain, but it does mean if you get underneath one of these storms you could have a heavy downpour, maybe some lightning associated with them, and that's going to spell uh, like that across the entire seven day forecast. Tonight, 71 degrees for the overnight low. I'm keeping the rain out of the forecast throughout the rest of the night. Tomorrow around 8 a.m., about 77, 1 o'clock, 89, 4 o'clock, 91. Those rain chances tomorrow coming mainly somewhere from about noon all the way to about 6 o'clock. That'll be our greatest chance of rainfall, and then you'll see it drop right back off. Let's look at the entire week. A 30% chance of rain for Monday, 40% on Tuesday, 40% on Wednesday. Highs pretty much in the 90s all the way across the board, but those best rain chances coming Tuesday and Wednesday. And then on Thursday, you've got a 30% chance of rain, and we'll keep it at 30% all the way into this weekend. Don't think it's going to be a washout every day. The mornings actually should be pretty nice, but then as you get into those afternoon hours, humid with that chance of a storm. Vanessa, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Coming up next, a stylist with a shaved head quits her job after being asked to wear a wig. More details coming up. When a hairstylist shaved her head to show support for her sister's battle against cancer, her employer asked her to wear a wig. But as Patrick Erickson reports, the stylist chose to quit rather than cover her head. I was proud to leave and proud to stand up for what I believe in. Melanie Strandberg has been doing hair in the Spokane area for nearly eight years. Calling it a passion of hers, she's been a salon supervisor at Larive Salon and Spa at the Northern Quest Casino and Resort since December. Recently, Melanie decided to shave her head in support of her sister, Marissa, who was about to start her second round of chemotherapy. I did it to support her um, and anyone going through cancer treatment. I think it's really important um, that when somebody's going through that, that they don't feel alone. Now, this isn't the first time Melanie has done something like this for her little sister. Last year, when Marissa originally learned she had stage 3 ovarian cancer, she had her first round of chemo and lost all of her hair. Not wanting her to go through this difficult experience alone, Melanie also shaved off every single hair on her head, saying hair is only a frame for the face. This week, Melanie was forced to write a resignation letter to her manager, Larive. She says after showing up to work with her head shaved, she was told by management that she had to wear a wig because being bald may make guests uncomfortable and a hairstylist with no hair doesn't make any sales. Feeling like it was her only decision, Melanie chose her family 
over her job. I don't feel like I should need to cover up what I'm standing up for. Um, the reason that I did it was to support and um, I'm proud to show that I'm a proud supporter. I don't feel like that's something that should be hidden. Marissa says she wasn't surprised when she heard what her big sister did. It means more than words. I mean, Nellie and I have been lucky enough to be sisters, but we're blessed to say that we're best friends as well. We reached out to the owner of the salon, Northern Quest Casino and Resort, to get their side of the story. They emailed us this response. We take these allegations very seriously as they are inconsistent with Northern Quest Resort and Casino's values and culture. We are conducting an internal investigation to look into this matter. We pride ourselves on celebrating diversity and have always honored an employee's choice to shave his or her head in support of a friend or loved one who's battling cancer. Strandberg has filed suit against the company for discrimination and harassment. Coming up in sports, we have updates on the College World Series and highlights from the Mississippi Fuegos match against the Knoxville Lady Force at the JCJC Soccer Complex. Mississippi State and Indiana are already in the winner's bracket after beating Oregon State and Louisville respectively. On the other side of the finals are LSU, UCLA, and the ACC duo of North Carolina and NC State. The conference, the conference rivals faced off earlier today, and it was pretty one-sided. We take you to the action in TD Ameritrade Park. Kent Emanuel on the hill for the Tar Heels. He's been solid for North Carolina all year, but not today. Top of the first, NC State's Taryn Sine flips one over the shortstops. That allows Trey Turner to score from second, giving the Wolfpack a one-run lead. Two to nothing now in the third. Brett Williams with the looping swing gets this one to drop right inside the left field foul line. Falls down for the double. The ball takes a funny bounce. Left fielder can't make the play. That allows Grant Clyde to score all the way from first. Wolfpack up three to nothing. They just pile it on after this, folks. NC State beats rival North Carolina eight to one. And some more scores for you from Omaha. UCLA, UCLA and LSU just finishing UCLA winning two to one in that one. Oregon State and Louisville play Monday at 2. The loser of that game goes packing. And later on in that day, State takes on, Indi on the Indiana Hoosiers. The loser of that game will play the winner of the Oregon State-Louisville ball game. Now over to women's soccer. The Mississippi Fuego taking on the Knoxville Lady Force. The score is tied at 1 in the 59th minute. Claudia Sacedo on the free kick. She sends it into the box. And on the receiving end, Danica Roberts heads it in, puts the Fuego up 2-1. to one. But the Lady Force making a game of it late, down 3-2, to two, and on the attack, Skylar Brewer sends one. The goalie can't handle it, and Chelsea McCarty drives it in, ties it at three. Lisa Mann with a late chance for the Fuego as she makes a run at it. With the flip, the goalie doesn't make the play. Well, she doesn't have to. It went, goes wide left, and in the second minute of stoppage time, Fuego defense on retreat, and Morgan Gr uh, Grunenfelder doesn't miss her chance. Makes it a 4-3 to three game. Knoxville goes on to win. Head coach Danny Owens on the tough loss. It was just coming all day. Uh, we, were, we kept subbing with numbers just because of the heat and all. Um, and I think the last goal, we had an opportunity to go up 4-3, and I just think we put our heads down, and uh, they scored at the very end of the game. So it was definitely unfortunate. Cleveland Browns quarterback and Taylorsville native Jason Campbell was in town yesterday for his second annual football camp in partnership with the Pine Belt FCA. More than 400 kids attended the free camp at Jones County Junior College's football practice fields, and Campbell offered not only gridiron knowledge, but words of wisdom about, the life, to about life to athletes. And while the main focus of the camp was on the kids and their goal, the nine-year veteran spoke about his new team in Northeast Ohio. I'm just excited about our opportunity and our team. I know the Browns have been a team that's, you know, is trying to come back, you know, back to the back to where they belong, and uh, it's been a work in progress. And you know, now I have an opportunity to be a part of it, and uh, it'd be it'd be more exciting to, to see things get turned. Moving on to the national scene in the men's uh, U.S. Open final, Phil Mickelson, your leader, going into the day at minus one here on the 10th hole, the fan favorite, showing why he's one of the best players in the world. This one rolls in for the eagle. He shoots him up to the leader at even. And on the 11th hole, par four, Jason Day recovered from a shot, chipping this one in on the 11th for the bogey from the rough. He's plus one and finished on the day three, three over on the day for second. Justin Rose now on the 13th makes the long birdie putt, gets him to plus one. 
on the 18th hole, Phil, uh, Phil Mickelson on the par four with a chance to keep this round going. Chips it up. He has to drain it to make it a chance, but no. Justin Rose goes on to win your U.S. Open, the first major title for him, hug, hugging his wife here. This is Mickelson's sixth time finishing as runner-up, and here he is on the loss. All day it seemed as though until that hole out on 10, it just seemed like I would hit putt after putt that just wouldn't go in, and they looked good three feet out, four feet out, and I just couldn't quite get it to go in. The greens, the spike marks and everything smoothed right out after the rain, and there was no excuses there. Early on, it was a little rough around the hole, but um, for the most part, I had a, a good opportunities all the way through and um, let it slide a little bit. Well, that's it for tonight. Thank you for joining us, and have a good night.